All right. So a couple of uh, years down the road, you step off of a bus. You uh, squint as the sun rises, you know. It was like a city bus or like a Greyhound? A Greyhound. Oh, so I'm taking a trip. Yep. Where am I going and that I'm taking a bus? You are going to Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. And, bro- why, and brother. Why am I not like flying there? You have arrived. Oh, you know, you're just trying to uh, save some cash. But you're starting to think that you're start you, you know you haven't been doing too well lately, Aaron. I'm not gonna lie to you, but you're starting what to think. What does that mean? What do you mean I'm not doing too well lately? So this is uh, a few years down. And I'm the trying road. to like save cash. Yeah. So this is a few years down the road. Uh, in the interim, uh, you know, you were uh, you were doing stand up comedy. Things were going pretty well. You know, starting to do more uh, paid spots around town. Um, there's like a, a local comedy website that covers LA comedy. And they're like, they, they wrote like a, a profile on you and that kind of like raised your, your status level. It's, uh, the oh, name, wow. yeah, it's, um, a co- it's a website that chronicles comedy and it's called, um, the compiler. Ooh. And it compiles all the different, you know, mm. not, not everything, but pretty, but they try to, they try to compile everything about LA comedy on their website. And so it's a very popular site. Okay. So they profiled you. Things were, were going pretty well. Um, you know, people bring you up and you know, your next comedian has uh, been featured on the compiler. And then people would go like, Oh my God, is it, is it? And then they'd be like Aaron Brooks. Oh, wow. So the compiler definitely has like a sway amongst comedy audiences in LA. It absolutely does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It absolutely does. Um, what happened was, uh, you won tickets to go, uh, to the, the masters. Okay. I won that little lottery. I'd probably go with my, I take, I would take my brother 100%. Yeah. You and your brother go, um, you won it. Uh, you went to a, uh, Jared. <laughs> You went to Jared uh, because uh, the Jared by your uh, by your apartment has like a um, a pharmacy. And wait, uh, wait, the Jared. Wait, my brother's name is Jared. Right, but you said you went to Jared. Yeah, go. I would go to my brother Jared. Oh, I thought you meant Jared the the jeweling store. Jeweling. So the fuck am I going to the jeweler? Because the brooch for my brother to go to the so, masters. What are we doing? No. So what happened was you you went to Jared's and then you went to the back of it because they have like a uh, like an old school like nineteen fifties ass like diner slash pharmacy. You know what I'm talking about? The soda jerk. Yeah, the soda jerk. Um, the bicarbonate. Oh, absolutely. And there are you know they they make like malts and yeah. fucking shakes and and stuff like that and um. But you went there because you had to get uh like anti diarrhea medicine. Wait, why is there a fucking diner soda jerk pharmacy at the back of a jewelry store? Um, it's Jerry. So like uh so the reason that they did that is you know, they were just thinking kind of a cool, not necessarily rebrand, but sort of an expansion on their whole their their core, you know, whole thing is why not try to bring back in these crazy times the simplicity what a awful idea <laughs> the simplicity of you know an old school pharmacy you know let's make them walk through a jewelry store to get to it that's part of it is they're like you know you what happens is people their reasoning is like is like this uh people go to jewelry stores to do what buy jewelry but that makes them you know kind of nervous and sometimes they feel kind of strange about it sometimes they're openly hostile so to kind of calm people down they have this thing in the back this pharmacy where you know if if you all if you want something sweet to kind of uh, you know make your mood a little bit better or maybe like yourself you need some anti-diarrhea medicine you can just go to the back 
that's you know i'm not saying it's a good idea i'm just saying this is what they did oh nobody's saying it's a good idea no no uh you pass what by a horrible idea you pass by what's the, the what's the what's the pharmacy called it's an untitled pharmacy so you so, uh what happened so, was you go to the back uh the soda jerk you kind of like nod at him and say hello he just kind of like grunts Great. What great service. I'm glad that I'm glad that they're here to ease my pain and my anxiety. He's kind and of my a, diarrhea. He's kind of a jerk. You uh you pass by him. Jesus. Uh, you go and you buy you have they have like, you know, the different medicines. So you get um it's called diarrhea no more. <laughs> and so you bring uh you bring it. It's what, just like, pills. Uh... They're pills. Yeah, they're bright pink okay. pills. And they stop your diarrhea in its tracks so you go there and uh you purchase it and like this alarm goes off when you purchase it and they're like they go holy shit holy shit holy <laughs> saying shit. this it's like a it's like uh the, it's like this thing where the um the ceiling opens up and there's like balloons and confetti and th there's like an alarm like a red light going crazy and it turns out that you happen to be the one millionth person to purchase diarrhea no more that this year alone. And so your prize oh, is wow. you get to go to the masters and like your picture is taken. Uh, it's put in the paper. It, uh, it's put um, in the store too. It's like, you're, you're like shaking hands with like the, um, the person who sold it to you. Uh, they're holding it up. Like it's like a winning lotto ticket, you know? Yeah. Yeah. In the background, the soda jerk just fucking skulks. What a brick. Fuck you. That's why I say to him as I leave. He doesn't even respond. Good. So you uh you win tickets to go to the Masters. So uh ironically enough, you bring your brother Jared to it. And uh you guys are watching and it gets to like the final hole of the Masters. Okay. There's this um new hotshot golfer on the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Dex cannons. Dex cannons? Yeah. Plural cannons? Cannons. Man, this guy must hit it a mile. Sounds like he hits it a mile. Dude, his arms are huge. Yeah. This guy's bombing it, I bet. Oh, yeah. Long off the tee. It's actually like the longest that you've ever seen in your fucking life. Like this guy yeah. is tearing it up. And so it's like the final, you know, uh, the final hole. If he's, you know, if he sinks this hole. He wins. He wins a master's Dex yeah. cannons. And he is. What's his temperament like? Dex cannons. You kind of get the impression that he's like a overconfident he's very confident you know cocky the thing about like Dex, with, with reason to be so that's the thing is that his thing is when people call him out on it he goes you know look i know it's gonna make it sound like a dick but like it's it's not really arrogance if you can back it up yeah and yeah. he backs it yeah. up dex cannons but he, he, thing up. he does, you know, but he's not like one dimensional. You know, he does have a, a softer side. He sure he uh, does extensive charity work uh, for right. it's it's a charity called. Um, children who just kind of suck. It's a it's a charity that helps uh, children who I mean, you know, it's right there in the title. Kids who just for whatever reason, through no fault of their own, they're just lame as fuck. And no one, you know. They got no friends. They got nothing. No one's into these kids. And so um, what are their families. Well, that's the thing. The families are the ones who enter them, you know? So but what is it? What does that mean? Are they like giving up custody of this child because no, they suck? no, it's just like he just does like personal appearances and like hangs out with them. And then people see it and they're like, oh, my God, it's Dex cannons. That kid must be cool. It works 100 okay. percent of the time. It's clout. And he is the thing that uh, is his fucking arms uh, is that he is recognizable like from behind. That's how big this guy's fucking That's arms big, are. Man, yeah. this guy's pumped. Yeah, he has a he's about you know 
he's about six feet tall. So he's like, you know, a little tall, but he's not like it's just that his arms are so big. Is like the rest of him muscular as well, or are these like arms like they're out of proportion? Way out of proportion. Whoa. So he's is he like just like a skinny guy other than these huge arms? Um, I wouldn't call him skinny, but I mean I wouldn't call him fat. I'd call him just like a an average man with fucking cannons for huge forearms. Pipes. Yeah. And so are his biceps big too, or just his forearms? He's been working on his biceps, but no, I mean, they're, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this, he's athletic, you know what I mean? It's not like, sure. um, the rest of he's his like body Popeye. is, yeah, he's, he's, ath- he's definitely athletic, but the focus clearly has been on, you know, the guns on the, it's the forearms specifically. Yeah. Not as much the biceps. I most just yeah. want to make sure. Yeah. The biceps are like, you know, large, but they're proportion, but the, the forearms yeah. are very large. Okay. So what an absurd set of arms. So he uh, goes to like hit the shot and like it's dead silent. And uh, you like fart really, really, really loudly right as he goes. And it like, he goes like, like as you fart and he, uh, it goes like, you know, the ball goes wild. And uh, of course he doesn't win. And like everyone just like stops and like looks at you and you just like turn beat red. Especially because you're wearing like a, a shirt that you used to sell on the road. Uh, it just it has your face and it says it's supposed to say I farted, but they fucked it up and it says I fat red instead. So you fart. You're wearing that ridiculous shirt. Everyone like stares at you like it's so obviously you. You know what I mean? Um and so, like, it's not like you get in trouble. It's not like you meant to do it. But th- because of this, they do institute a rule now at the Masters. Just no farting at all. No farting at the Masters. There's no farting at the Masters anymore. Uh, yeah. How but are that, they going to police that? Well, I mean, they have, you know, pe- you know, they have people who go around and make sure that people aren't farting. Like, it, it also it applies to the players, too. I mean, what, what if somebody sneaks off a silent one? Like, I, I don't think they can enforce this. The silent ones are the most deadly ones. If you are caught, if you are caught doing a silent but deadly, like you are banned. If you fart and you, like, depending on the severity of it, like it, it ranges from them saying like, "Hey, man!" Like first, first and only warning to like you're you're gone and you're banned forever. All right, they sell an egg salad sandwich at the Masters. Why are they going to do that? And like expect people to not fire any off. So here's the deal. You know, do they the take no- the egg salad sandwich off the menu? Otherwise, the no- so the the, the, the the no farting thing is people all agree that's you know a little absurd and like it's really hard to yeah. police. However, because of this, the egg salad sandwich is taken off the menu, and pe- shit. people are not happy with you. This is my fault. This is a gross overreaction to a gross action. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it is for sure. But, you know, it, it happened and it's because of you that this happened. So it's people are a little, Fucked you know, up. not not happy with you. And so. You fucking get off of that bus. And you kind of like. Take a deep breath, you know. And you're like. You smell that pine on the air of Madison, Wisconsin, and you think to yourself, this is the weekend I turn it all around because you, my friend, are going to Motocon. Fuck is that? What in the world is that? You have since become a motivational speaker. Where Modicon as in motivational con. Yeah. And so oh, Jesus you've, Christ. You've since become a motivational speaker. And wow. you go you can you go around like talking to people about, you know, you went through this thing where you farted and it, it ruined this guy's career. Like he he never recovered from it mentally. And um you 
Dex Cannons? Yeah, Dex Cannons is finished. And so you um have just started doing this and you talk about how low you felt after and how you kind of built yourself, you know, back up and learned to love again, you know? And so I'm not going to say that your reach is like huge, but you've started to kind of work this act at like various places. Oh um, man, this feels like an act. You do it at like, like you like at first you do it pro bono, you know, you go to like some high schools and you just talk to them about the dangers of farting in public and uh, stuff like that. And you, you know, you, you slip in your motivational stuff and you kind of start to put together an actual it's in you, you're kind of finding it similar to building your standup back. You're kind of realizing the rhythms and realizing what stuff goes better with what stuff, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. And so you've started to play like ad adult theaters. So what the, what like, like, adult theaters because you said i was working with high schoolers you're saying like like normal regular theaters or like i mean like, like regular reg yeah I, pornography oh no, yeah i don't know why i phrased it like that i i mean like <laughs> theaters where there's like that adults go to watch like like like, like, like a, a learning center like a learning center that kind of thing oh okay that, more like okay. that yeah more like that than the theater okay. i guess Sorry. like a community a community center kind it's of a, place yeah it is a community center and they uh, but i'll tell you they do have an adult theater in there they have an adult section of the so community what? center they're putting on like live nude plays like i mean i don't know i mean you don't go in you know you feel kind of weird about the whole thing so you go to this convention in madison wisconsin Modicon. that sucks you <laughs> You kind of go there and you you're there to listen to some people give some presentations uh, there. You you know, they're there to kind of motivate you a little bit. You know what I mean? Who motivates the motivators? You say that out loud to yourself as you saunter into the fucking convention center. You're also there to kind of pitch yourself. You know what I mean? Like you have, um, yeah, you know, your own like kind of booth set up where people come over and you can kind of hawk your products like you've written some you know it's all self-published but uh you you've actually sold a few like you know books about how to motivate yourself kind of your own story and you mix in you know your own homespun wisdom you know oh man so uh you're there at Modicon, and there are some I mean, there, there are some people there that you've never heard of, and there's some people there who have no talent whatsoever, and they're not motivating at all. But there are some pretty heavy hitters there. Yeah, like who? Who's the that, heaviest hitter in the motivation scene that's there? Dennis Henman. Dennis Henman. Dennis Henman was uh, born as a skeleton. What do you mean? He uh, a fucking skeleton. He had no heart. Had, he had no brain. How did he, he came, survive? Well, that's kind of his big motivating story is how he survived being born only as a skeleton and kind of how he learned. He motivated himself to, you know, he, 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 if you looked at him now, dude, you would have no, you would have no idea if you didn't know who he was. Like he's managed to turn his what life. What does that even mean? He just looks does like a normal. Have, does he have skin? Does yeah. He, have... he looks like a normal human now. And he tells his story and it is well documented too. Like there are some so people he, who, when he first came out, people were like himself say again, he, he motivated himself at birth into a sentient pile of bones that somehow gained organs, a musculature, skin, yeah. hair as a side and effect, it, as a side effect of his, of his condition. And it's not, they're never really sure. Like why this is like what the connection is but he remembers uh, every moment of his life jesus from, Christ, from birth from up into the <laughs> yeah you think so yeah man what a fucking prison well he i remember this... a lot but... yeah 
Oh but man. You, well, you know what, Aaron? He doesn't see it that way. And he'll he'll be glad to talk to you. He'll talk to like he's the type of guy where he'll he'll walk into like a coffee shop to get something and someone will go like, Oh, you know, Mr. Hemmond, Mr. Hemman, let's, you know, holy shit. Like, I'm so sorry to bother you. And he's like, Oh no. Like, like, he'll, he'll, he'll talk to them and like yeah. if they have a problem, like he'll talk to them about it. You don't give a fuck. He will be he used to be nothing but bones. And now, and his whole thing is when you have flesh, it's the best. Live your life. Everybody has flesh. You're the only person who's who didn't have flesh for a, even a little bit. But that's the Everybody thing. Everybody else has always had flesh. Like, but what a fucking stupid statement. No, no. That's his whole thing is that, like, you know, I was born without flesh and I always looked at the people who were born with it. I was angry. I'm going to be honest with you. He Like, this is like a thing that he gives in his presentation at Modicon. He's like, you know what? I was angry. I, I would see people who just had just flesh of their own that they didn't, you know, they had anything to do with. So did he all of a sudden? He resented them. Gain... He resented them. And then then one day he was able to kind of change his point of view where he goes, I motivated myself out of spite when I should have done it out of self-love. And that's kind of his whole thing is that if I can grow, if I can will myself to grow skin. So he grew it. Then that's you can do anything. Yeah, he motivated himself. So he motivated himself from a literal pile of nothing but bones. And he 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 motivated his body to grow organs and muscles and skin. He he motivated himself to to do that, to create all of that. And his his body slowly filled out. Was it like an instant fill out, or did this happen over like a long period of time? Um, it happened over uh many years. It took a long time. You know, so he just Jesus walked around Christ. and he was a you know, a, a sentient, you know, skeleton and stuff, and he could still talk and you know. But it was uh, his life was not oh, easy. He doesn't have a fucking brain. His life was not easy. Brain. Yeah, Pat. He had no organs. And his thing is, you know, and he used to like, he'd go outside and the kids would go like, you know, bony bones, bony bones, got no skin upon his nose. And they'd throw like rocks at him and stuff. And so his thing is like, you know, if I can learn to love myself, then I think anyone can. And he's like, and he really means it. That's the thing is that he really does mean it. So I don't give a fuck about this guy's perspective. I don't care about I don't care about him motivating. I want to know. I want to know how he went from a pile of bones to a normal person with uh, everything else. Well, he's not like a pile of bones. He's like a baby. He comes out as a baby, but like a baby skeleton, like he can like cry bones. and and walk around. Yeah, and like you know, crawl around and, and shit like that. He's just like anyone else. He he's just right away. So you're at a Moticon and uh, you have your booth set up and, uh, you know, you do talk to some people, uh, but you don't make like any sales. And like you definitely hand out your card out to people, but people are, are kind of like, oh, yeah, like they, they definitely seem they act like they're interested, but you know, in your heart that they're not. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know the feeling. Yeah. The guy next to you is fucking he's like he sold probably like 500 of his books that Great. day. Yeah. Time. The guy that left you, he goes, man, it is like shooting fish in a barrel. People are walking by. They'll scoop up his, they won't even look. They'll like just grab his book and like throw like, you know, money at him and stuff. Great. Good for him. He looks at you. He goes fish in a barrel. So, um, that night you're like uh you're not you're, you're not feeling too good and so you like um before you go back to your hotel you're like fuck it i'm just going to go find like like the the greasiest like you know like oh yeah comfort food that i can find you know what i mean I'm very depressed yeah yeah they have like all the different types of like fast food, you know, places there. Uh, which one would you hit up? Do you think if you had your choice? Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, we're talking about not we're talking about volume, right? This turns into a volume question. Yeah, it's it's absolutely an issue of volume. Oh, man. It's volume. I got to think Taco Bell. 
sure. just because they got a lot of things for a little money and you can just order a bunch of them. Yeah. You know? So you go there, you hit up uh, the Taco Bell. You get like a, you know, a bunch of tacos. You get like some soda, some water. Drive back to your hotel. You walk up to room uh, 666. Great. You sit down. And uh, you turn on the TV. You're like, uh, as you unwrap your food, and you're like, I'm just going to watch like chunks uh, and like just go to sleep and yeah, fly back home, whatever. So like you start eating, you start watching and like right as like the theme music is like about to start playing, uh, you just hear, hey, Aaron. Oh, no. Hey, Aaron. I'm down here, buddy. Oh, no. And, and you go, what the hell? And you look down and in the water, it's like they're doing this new thing at Taco Bell where they're doing like, a, you ever had like cucumber in water? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're kind of doing that. But when you look down, the they must have like had some kind of like mix up or something because instead of a cucumber in your water, there is a, a dill pickle. Oh, gross. And you kind of are like, yeah, that's what you think. You go, ah, oh, gross. And you go to like grab it to get it out. But when you go to grab it, you see that now it has like googly eyes. Yeah. And like a big smile. Yeah. And you're kind of like, huh? And you kind of like rub your eyes. And now it has like a thick jet black pompadour at the top oh, yeah. of that fucking pickle head of him. And he's wearing yeah. it, lo it looks like he's wearing like a leather jacket, like the, the sleeves are like empty. You know what I mean? But it's that kind of thing where the leather jacket kind of floats around him almost. Sure. He smiles at you. His smile like, extends off of his like face. Yeah. And he goes, hey, Aaron, it's me. Dill the dill. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here to get you out of your pickle. Dill he, goes, dill. he goes on to explain that. um he is part of this thing called uh, the pickle clan. The pickle clan is this like almost intelligence network of pickles across the globe uh, where they share information. He goes, Jesus Christ. He goes, Aaron, we're a lot more powerful than you think. He goes, I can make everyone forget about the farting video, Aaron. I can make it all go away and you look down and it's almost like the pompadour is like even you didn't think this was possible it's even thicker than it was before jesus christ for, for a moment it's so dark and it's so jet black that for a moment you you think of like stars dying you know what i mean you think to yourself if the, if the sun was any closer Vacuous. to this thing it yeah. would get sucked into it oh shit and like you kind of shiver, but the good kind. Ugh. So he goes, Aaron, we can make everyone forget about that. We can make it so that your life goes back to what it was before, buddy. <laughs> you just oh, got to, he goes, you just got to do one thing. What's that? You got to kill a man. Jesus. Who am I killing, Bill? So he tells you that uh, there is a serial killer who's been uh, going after uh, golfers. Specifically ones that are really, really good at putting. Uh, okay. It's called. Yeah, it's called the, the short game slayer. Oh, and yeah. What he does is he God goes to, damn. <laughs> to various the short game slayer that's what the media calls him and so he uh yeah like i said he targets putters basically people who are really really good at it and so he goes from um you know d different tournaments different tournaments some of them as big as he hasn't hit the masters quite yet but you know he's hit like 
some pretty big deal games, you know, but he's also hit some smaller ones too. So like, it's really hard to like predict this guy's next move. All we know is that he's going after people who can play well. And there are some people and it is getting in people's heads. There are some yeah. golfers who will intentionally add a few strokes to their game at the end, like to like they'll purposely not. Off, yeah. yeah. They'll purposely not get, uh, the ball in they'll just like hit like three or four times then they'll get it in especially if they're like way ahead they'll just think to themselves hey man it's and like the odds of them getting killed are very are very slim but like sure they go, hey, man. A chance they go look i got a wife and kids you know they interview yeah. they yeah. interview one of the guys who did it bart marone and he's he goes he goes oh i got a i got kids i got a wife at the feed uh so what i to feed so what i, I got so a what wife I, to feed <laughs> Bart Marone, they have a complicated relationship with women. They, he does. I'm not going to lie to you. He absolutely does. It's definitely like the whole um, the Madonna whore thing. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, but that's uh, really neither here nor there. So basically, he explains that, you know, the short game Slayer, he goes, We know where he is, Aaron. You can stop him, you can be redeemed. And he like his eyes like gr grow even bigger for just a second. He and he's got and he has he raises his eyebrows and it's the thing where the eyebrows kind of hover, yeah, like, almost like a cartoon. It hovers like above his head. You know what I mean for a little yeah. while. Yeah, I and say that, and that pompadour remains inscrutable. Ugh. I think I'd say I'll help. I want tickets to the Masters every year for my brother and I. And I want that egg salad sandwich back on the menu. And I want the no farting rule removed. He kind of like, he, he just like looks at you. His smile gets even bigger. He goes, you got it, buddy. I want Dex cannons back on the tour. He nods. He goes, of course. All right. Where is he? Who is he? Wait, tell so me. he's staying at a, a nearby uh, Ramada Inn. Okay. I know my way around a Ramada. And that's the thing. Like he he kind of like nods to the closet in the hotel in your hotel room. And when you open it, there's like a Ramada Inn employee uh like costume hanging there. Oh, okay. On the name tag it says Aaron, but like it's like crossed out and it says like Doug above it. You just take All it right. off. You're like that part yeah. probably. Yeah, and probably so I don't need it. You look down at uh at Bill the Dill and he's like slowly kind of turning back into like a normal pickle, you know? Yeah. He goes, he goes, All right, Aaron, you know what you have to do. Do do you blank I get a spoon, I get him out of that soda as soon as possible. Yeah. You blank, he turns back into like a regular dill, floats down to the very bottom of the fucking cup. You get a spoon, spoon it out. Also, what item at Taco Bell has pickles? Has dill pickles? That's not like a Taco Bell topping. Well, they have like cucumbers, and so they, I guess, like a pickle. Oh, that, okay, that's yeah. okay. They got a cucumber thing now. Well, yeah, they put cucumbers in the water. Okay, which I will say is very refreshing. If you if you've never yeah done yeah it. yeah it's nice it's re it really is. You kind of think about that cucumber water. As you're like yeah. making your way to that Ramada in that Ramada in, and you think yeah. to, like you you just left it back there, and you think to yourself, that'll be part of the reward. Okay, a little bit of edging myself. Oh yeah, a fast food edging, fast food edging. So you go to the um, Ramada in. He's staying at the, on like the thirtieth floor. It's a big Ramada. That's a lot of Ramada. Yeah. So um, you go up to, uh, you know, floor 30. Bill the Dill has left you like a, uh, you're like one choice of weapon. What would it be? Yeah. Probably uh, some sort of a pistol with a silencer on it. 
Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to touch him. I don't want to, I don't want anything that's like super personal like that. Right. I'd probably just do my best to shoot him and run away. So you go to, you go to his, um, hotel room that he's staying in. Yeah. Room, um, eight. Walk up to it. What do you do? Like, how do you get in? What's your plan? Um, you hear like there's like a like a, a TV inside. I would as I could I like find like a dining cart or something. Yeah, there's actually one like there's one uh, across the uh, the hallway from you that like someone left there for like the person to get, and I guess they just never came back for it. But it's like the cart. The cart, you yeah. Know? I think I would grab the cart and I would knock on his door and make it look like I was delivering something. If this person is unsavory by nature, they probably like would accept food from like uh room service or whatever yeah. that wasn't theirs, you know. Sure. So, so I, I think I would ring the bell. So you walk I, I would have I would have my pistol. Uh -huh. I would have uh like one hand on the cart and the other hand on the other side of like the serving dish, but to where they couldn't see it, but I would have my pistol in that hand. Okay. So you grab that cart, you wheel it over. The wheels just like they, as you like push it across the carpet, they do not make a sound. Okay. You get to room eight. Yeah. You set that fucking pistol down. Yeah. And it's weird because you thought that the adrenaline would be driving you crazy. You thought that your heart rate would be just be pounding. But brother, you are as ice cold as that fucking glass of water waiting for you back at your hotel. Oh, shit. He opens the door. Uh, in the background, the TV's on. It's um, it's an episode of Chunks. He was watching. Uh, you just like and like he's just some guy. He looks completely normal. He's got yeah. um, brown hair. He's just wearing like a. Um, a shirt that says uh, <laughs> that says fuck you yeah and he goes who the fuck are you I'd say oh did you order room service sir he goes oh uh, I don't know what's in it he like goes to like grab one of the uh, plates that has like a thing on top of it to like take it off you know what I mean and when he does I mean I have my Gun pointed right at him, and I would just, I go, uh, man, would I even say anything? I don't know. I don't think I would say a cool line. I think I'd be too afraid. I think I would just like shoot him. So he, he yeah. goes, he goes to like grab and like pick up one of the, the tray things or whatever. And you yeah. just do what you just, you just fucking shoot him in the heart like four times. Yeah. And he just like slide, like hit, does the thing where he hits the wall and just like slowly slides down. And you, for the rest of your life, you will swear that you saw his soul leave his body. Yeah, man, like but a his, ghost. Yeah, but his soul was um, dark and twisted. I think I would push the cart into the room and close the door. You do. Uh, you look up. It's a. It's a. It's a, a rerun of Chunks that you've already seen. It's yeah. uh, an, an episode where uh, Howie and Chip are, um, they like, they'll, they'll take like a, a Ford, a white Ford Fiesta and they'll encase it in like a block of ice. And then they'll, um, they just drop another Ford Fiesta onto the top of it and they just like <laughs> crush, crush it. And then like, it goes like, yeah. And then they're both like, whoa, Chunks. <laughs> And so, and so you see that happen like right as you like push the um the the cart in and like as you close the door like you like you like crashes down and you hear him go chunks and you've seen that episode so many times that you time it perfectly you say chunks along chunks. with them so yeah. all three of you say it so you uh you close the door and you, rules. and you just like skedaddle the fuck out of there yeah i get out of there you get back to your hotel you walk into uh, your room, 666. 
you walk in and like pull like you know you the um the ramada in uh employee you know costume off uh there's like a, a trash bag uh waiting for you there's like a note that just says like and like you pick like it's kind of hard to read because it's got a little kind of small and so you pick it up sure. and like, look at it and it says like hey buddy if you're reading this, then you were successful. Way to go. Yeah. It, the first time's always the hardest when it comes to killing. Anyway, <laughs> just drop everything in this trash bag and we'll take care of the rest. Thanks, buddy. And then it says, from Bill the Dill. There's yeah, a... Um, I, I, yeah, there's I, a, an air... Fucking- there's an arrow indicating for you to turn the thing over. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, of course. You turn it over and um, on the other side is um, on the top of it. It just says Bill the Dills babe of the month. Oh, no. And you're like, what? And like, you just kind of like throw it down. You're like, I don't whatever. So you put everything into the uh, the trash bag and you just like fucking leave. Yeah. You uh, fly back uh, to Los Angeles that very I day. Fly. I don't take. I don't take a bus. No, you're like you're so desperate to get out of there that you're like, fuck this. Yeah. I'm getting out. So even though times are you know, a little tight, you're like, I'm just going to tighten that belt. And so um, you fly back, get home that very night, crawl into bed. You dream of a howling void. Right. You, wake, you wake up the next morning. And you kind of like look over at like your uh what do you call it? like a, like a table that you have next to your bed you know a yeah. nightstand and there's um an envelope it says Aaron do you open it yeah yeah I open it you open it up inside are three tickets. To go to the Masters. Okay. You uh, crawl out of bed. You know, you're like, holy shit. You look over, and on the calendar that you have next to your um, like desk or whatever, it's yeah. there's all of these like stand up gigs written in there that you have coming up, and you're like, oh wow. You're like, holy shit. Yeah. You walk outside um to to get like the newspaper or whatever. Yeah. And uh you kind of like walk outside and you pick it up and you look around and um, these two kids that live in your, uh, that live in your, like, uh, what do you call? Like neighborhood. Yeah. They, um, they walk past. They're like these just two punk kids, these two fucking punk kids. And your whole thing is like, look, man, like I was a kid too, but like these, look, these guys are, are bad news. They are very mean. Normally when they see you, they just make like farting noises until you walk away. They've done it to you every single time that you've seen them. Okay. I mean, I'm probably used to that at this point. My life has been ruined by farts. Yep. Uh, you, uh, they walk past you. They look up and see you and they go, oh, hey, Mr. Aaron. They go, good to see you. I keep walking. Man, this is my Biff Tan and Wax My Truck moment. Yep. So that year you go to uh, the Masters. You bring your brother, Jared, and you also have a, another plus one. Who would you bring? Oh, man. To the master? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. There's got to be. I mean, I, there's a guy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know who I I know who I'd ask. His name's his name is Matt. He runs uh, an auto repair dealership. Loves golf. I met. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So Matt comes Matt. with you. Uh, Matt, McDavid. Matt McDavid comes with you. You guys are, are, are at the Masters. Watching the game. Farting up a storm. No one's I love doing Matt shit. McDavid, and I know he would be farting too. Yeah. All three of you guys. And so you're uh, there watching and um, they get to like, you go to like the last hole, hole 18. Yeah. And um, you're there watching and uh, Dex Cannon goes to like line up his like final shot or whatever. And yeah. it's, he's having a one hell of a game great very happy for Dex. so it's like if you know he had all he has to do is sink this like two foot putt and he wins the masters 
And then he looks up and he sees you and he goes, you son of a bitch. And he throws his uh, putter at you. <laughs> it goes through your fucking head. What the fuck? Come on. I got him back. I got him back in the game. He's the only right. He's the only one who remembers how reality was before. Oh, Jesus. Why? Every, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He's the only one. And so he even though like reality has changed, he still went through all of the like the trauma that happened to him. And so sure, sure. he's and then the, the, the fact that reality has now since been rewritten as like really knocked a screw loose in him. And so looking up and seeing you just made him. It was the wrong place, the wrong thing oh, to see, dude. Man. He threw it he so his putter through my head. Yeah. And those forearms rippled in the morning sun when he did it. It went right through your fucking head, dude. And uh, you kind of like, like <laughs> fall over and like you kind of like slump against a tree so you can see what's going on. Uh, and then after he does, after he does it, there's like dead silence. And then his uh, his caddy comes up and just hands him a new putter. He sinks the putt and he's the new master's <laughs> champion. <laughs> It's the comeback <laughs> of the fucking year. Dex cannons. People are so psyched by this like redemption story that he just doesn't get in trouble for killing you. God damn it, Dex. Man, that sucks. <laughs> oh, and then like at the last thing you hear is people going, people chanting, Dex is back. Dex is back. And then you die. I'm dead. My brain is plastered to the tree behind me. Yeah. Fuck that. That sucks. 